guys, what's up? It's Joe Reddy from Reddy's Rides. I am back here at Moss Family Chevrolet in Tampa, Florida. And lo and behold, we got a 2019 Chevrolet Camaro RS. Now, I'm sure you've been seeing, I'm sure you've been hearing all the controversy, all the skepticism, the big debate over the new styling for this, the, the new Chevy Camaro. And I'm here to bring you this RS version. Now, if you don't know much about the Camaro, it's been around since 1967. It was a result of Ford producing a Mustang in 1964 and a half. And since then, been a big, huge pony car war go going on. The war kind of went away after 2002, but guess what? In 2010, when Chevrolet brought the Camaro back, it is back on and better than ever. Some people say, hey, what is a Camaro? Well, guess what? When the Chevrolet executives back in 1967 were asked that very question, what is a Camaro? They said, if you look it up in the dictionary, a Camaro is something that eats Mustangs for a day-to-day -day thing. And that's what I think a lot of Chevy fans love about the Camaro. It is that direct competition to the Mustang. Let's go ahead and see this all new styling for 2019. Now you can see with the RS, what I like about it compared to the SS is I like the way this middle bumper area is painted the same color as the car. You can see with the RS package, you get these wonderful LED headlights. I like how small they've gotten. It really gives it a more sinister, aggressive look. One area that is a big piece of the debate is right here on the corner. Now, I'm gonna zonk this partially because I like what they're doing with actually having a functional piece here, but I don't know how it really flows. It'd be interesting to see if you block this up how it would change the front of the car because that was one of my big hangups with the SS is that so much of this is just regular black gloss plastic that it really makes it look too open. And for the six cylinder version, the RS, I like the way that a lot of this is filled in. It'd be interesting, like I said, if this would just come down and just be one solid piece. Now on the RS, I do like the little chrome access, accents that they add to the venting. Very nice touch, really gives it a, a more aggressive look, especially with tying it into the black bow tie and then that really cool RS badge. Really pops, you can see the silver accent around the badging. Really, like I said, just makes it a more cohesive package. And I really think the front of the RS is more attractive than the SS. Now remember, Chevy designers admit that they went a little too aggressive on the SS and they're already working on a redesign, which is supposed to be coming out in mid-2019. So it'll be interesting to see what they change. I think they should have stuck with something a little bit more this direction rather than going that futuristic look. But on the RS, really fits it well. I love this color. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side here. Now, one thing that I do think works perfect on this particular Camaro SS is I love the wheels. Nice style, I like the silver with the little darker areas of gray here and there. It's a 20 inch wheel, so very, very nice size. 245 uh, width on the tire, and this is a 40 series, so that means your sidewall is gonna be much lower than something, say, like a 50 series tire, but really good look to it. RS, I would like to see an upgrade on the brakes. Uh, you know, maybe a nice light Brembo setup would be a nice touch to give it that extra sportiness and performance, but that is the setup that you get with the 2019 Camaro. Now, as we go down the side, a lot of this is gonna be unchanged. You got that very familiar uh, Camaro badging with the red, white, and blue. As we transition down the side of the car, I think what really makes this car look so aggressive is that concept car look to it. When this car was just a concept back in the mid to late 2000s, it had the same basic roof line and that's one of the sore spots. Even though it looks great from the interior, a lot of people complain about how it's hard to see out of, but definitely from a, a visual standpoint, I really like the way it looks. As we wrap it around the back, I like what Chevy did with flaring out the fenders. Gives it that nice aggressive stance. And then here's another change because remember for 2019, a lot of the changes are mostly cosmetic. Um, you're not gonna see a lot on the mechanical side of things, but you can see 
with the back of the car, here's another sore spot are these taillights. Now I have seen the taillights at night and they do light up pretty cool, but I'm not 100% sold on the way that they look. So I'm gonna still zonk the back of the car, but I do like the nice kick up spoiler. And I like the way Chevrolet's going with a black bow tie rather than the gold traditional bow tie. I think something that Chevrolet really needs to look at, how about take the bow tie off and put an RS badge here? Same thing with the SS. Put the SS and the RS badge back here because where they place it, it just seems like it was an afterthought. And they kind of were playing, you know, pin the RS on the Camaro and they had a blindfold and kind of just put it there. I think, and I think a lot of you would agree, larger RS logo had that smack dab in the center there. I do like the way they finish it off with the exhaust. Nice sound, nice dual exhaust uh, sound to it. And with the Camaros, remember, you could get that uh, active exhaust where you could have it quieter or louder depending on what you want. Speaking of the exhaust, speaking of the sound, let's go ahead and check out that V6 underneath the hood. All right, guys, here we are underneath the hood of the 2019 Chevrolet Camaro RS. Remember, when it comes to the RS, that's primarily an appearance package. So that includes the HID and LED headlights, the 20 inch wheels and whatnot underneath the hood. It'd be nice, but the RS is not bringing you any extra performance compared to a standard Camaro with the V6. But you do have that tried and true 3.6 liter V6 pumping out 275 horsepower, 295 foot-pounds of torque. This car weighs around 3,448 pounds. So you're looking about zero to 60 in a, right around five 5.1 seconds. Now, if you do opt for an SS, you do have available to you the option of the 10 speed automatic transmission, but this 3.6 with the eight speed is gonna give you a uh, very good performance for you know, the engine size and the displacement and whatnot. If you're wondering, well, what about price point? This one, the way that you see it, you're coming in around an MSRP of around $40,000 with the RS package added and all that. Uh, fine stuff, but let's go ahead and start up this V6 so you can hear what it sounds like. All right guys, we're inside the 2019 Camaro. There are some updates on the interior. So remember, for 2019, when we say redesign, we talk about the front, the back, and some of the appointments on the interior. Let's start with the door panels. I like on this particular RS optioned level, I love the door panels. I like the leather on the armrest. I like the leather at the top of the door panel, right by the window control switch. And I like the added silver as well. Gives it a nice high upscale feel. Instead of it being a C, of hard plastic. Another place where I really think that Chevrolet hit the nail right on the head are these seats. Very, very comfortable. I love the leather material. I like the, the uh, contrast stitching. And I like the way that they added some lighter gray material here to just break up the sea of darker gray in the car and darker colors just to make it a little bit lighter. Very comfortable, very supportive. I like what they did on the dash here, getting a little bit softer material. One place I wish they would do, and this is where I'm gonna zonk it, is this whole top second, uh, section of the dash. This is a harder plastic compared to this is a little bit softer. I wish they would have done something with that, especially I think it would have uh, made it even a little bit more high upscale feel. I do love the AC vents. I like the silver around them. I like the way you're able to control them very easily, and they're very intuitive. There's not a lot of uh, you know thinking about it to figure out. Updated infotainment screen. This is an eight inch screen. I'll go ahead and fire it up. Obviously push button start. So you fire it up, you get your Chevrolet uh, logo. Somebody had the music on, but this is like I said, that eight speed automatic transmission. I like the leather around the shift knob. I also like on top the silver and the Camaro logo across the top as well. Very, very nicely done. I'll go ahead and hit continue on the infotainment screen. And you can see this one has navigation. It's got all the bells and whistles, and that's what brings it to that price point near $40,000. But I do like the size of the screen. One thing that I think is smart that Chevrolet engineers did is they tilted the screen a little back to help with that 
whitewash if it's real bright and sunny out. Speaking of bright and sunny, this one does have a sunroof. Now, that's a blessing and a curse. It's nice to have that ability to bring in some of that outside air, have a little bit of a convertible type feel to it, but with a sunroof, it does have a lower ceiling in here. So if you've been in a Camaro and you felt cramped, this one feels a little bit more, especially for me being six feet tall and where my head is in connection with the inside of the roof, with the ceiling part of the car here. Other than that though, center console, I like the leather that they put on the sides here. I like the leather shift boot. Here's your selector for your modes, which I'll show you that when Tom comes on over. This has an electric parking brake, very nicely padded in leather um, armrest here. You have your cup holders. Now these cup holders are on the smaller side, so you better be drinking little sippy cups um, because you're not gonna be able to put a very large drink here. Center console area, same thing, very, very small. I mean, you might get a cell phone in here and a wallet, that's about it. Seating position, very comfortable. Speaking of the seating position over here, why don't you come over here and I'll show you the business end where you're gonna be sitting, piloting this Camaro down the road. All right guys, the business end. First off, with these seats, they're eight-way position available with uh, the power setting, so you can get this to fit the contours of your body perfectly. They are heated and air conditioned, which is really nice as well. And on the door panel, you can see over here, you do have the ability to have some memory settings depending if you're gonna let somebody else drive the car or not. Now, when it comes to overall seating position, I think it's really good. I like the size of the steering wheel. I like the thickness. One thing I don't like is this plastic panel right here. And one thing I think that would help is if the RS was logo here, the logo was placed here. This does have the RS package. It'd be nice to have that added here. Now, I think the greatest way that I could use an analogy to separate the Mustang from the Camaro when it comes to the interior, this feels more 21st century feel. This is a 21st century interior where the Mustang uses a lot of its um, cues from the past tied in with technology of today to give you that overall feeling. But if you look at the dash, I think Chevrolet did a great job with the uh, dash over here with the analog tachometer. You have your analog speedometer in the center. You could have different digital uh, readouts depending on what you want to scroll through, which is really nice. The fonts are so super crisp and clear, good size, easy to read. Across the center there, you got all the good gauges you want, your oil temp, coolant temp, battery, all that good stuff. Lower right-hand corner, you have that shift indicator because remember, with the eight-speed automatic, you can use the paddles. The paddles, they're a cheaper plastic, so you have that feel, but they're a great size, which is nice. And compared to some other cars I've been in, especially like an Audi R8, the paddles are actually larger. They are attached to the steering wheel. Some people love that, some people don't. My problem with having them attached to the wheel is if you are gonna do a track day, if you are gonna do an autocross event, or even take it down a twisty road, if you have it all the way over here and you need to grab that next gear, it might be an issue for you, other than having the paddles attached to the steering column. This one does have heads up display, which is really cool. I can see it clear as day. I just feel cramped. Uh, now, if I drove this every single day, I'm sure I'd feel a little bit more comfortable, but compared to the Mustang, the interior of the Camaro is definitely more cramped. The hood is very high, um, but I like the shape of it. It looks really, really cool when you're sitting behind the wheel, um, but uh, overall, I think that it's a great option for somebody who doesn't want to go the Mustang route, but yet wants to have that old muscle car fun and feel. And with the V6, you're going to get better gas mileage and overall drivability. But if you're ready, I'm ready to wrap this one up. Hi guys, we're inside the 2019 Camaro RS. Before we roll out from Moss Family Chevrolet, I'm hoping that with where we place the GoPro, which it's suction cup to the inside of the sunroof, you could see the layout of the um, infotainment screen. Very, very easy to use. I love these knobs. As you see, as you twist the, the knob of the AC vent, it adjusts the temperature really nicely. And in the center is where you're going to uh, change the blower speed. So that kind of is cool the way they have it laid, laid out. Very clean. You know, not a lot of buttons all over the place. Everything is centrally located right here for your AC controls. You can see that this comes with dual climate. There's our eight-speed automatic. 
You could change your mode settings and all that. I'll go ahead and put the navigation screen on so you can see that. Eight inches in diameter, nice layout, clean, uh, very crisp and clean uh, setup on that. But we're gonna go ahead and roll out of Moz Family Chevrolet. I'm gonna say it, and I know some of you are not gonna like it. I'm gonna zonk the uh, the interior when it comes to visibility. It's 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 tight. It's tight in here. This front windshield is very slanted. It almost makes me feel like I'm in my old C4 Corvette that I used to have. That's how slanted the windshield is, especially compared to a Mustang. And if you look at the top of the instrumentation housing here on the dash, it's very high up, uh, which makes it even more so. Um, but the shifts from the eight speed are very crisp, very precise. And overall, the feel of the uh, V6 is, is, is a very nice engine. You know, I think it's a, a, a good option because I know with Ford and the Mustang, you no longer have a V6 option. You either go V8 or you go EcoBoost, one of the two. But with the Chevrolet uh, Camaro, you do still have that option of three power plants. They do have that turbocharged four, but they have this wonderful 3.6 liter V6, and of course the V8. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and change lanes here. Now, with visibility with the mirrors, the mirrors are good. The problem is you have a lot of blind spots in here. A lot of blind spots. Now with this car, you get the full suite of safety features, um, which also helps, and I'm really liking the heads-up display. That's another uh, really nice feature that is available in this car that you just can't get in a, in a Mustang GT. Right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and make a U-turn and I'm gonna get on it a little bit here. Uh, just gotta be careful, obviously. But go ahead and get on it. Drops down, goes all the way to the 7,000 RPM red line. You know what? For a person that doesn't wanna go all the way to the SS and get that V8, this V6 slots in very nicely, and it's just such a tried and true engine that's been in Chevrolet's lineup uh, for so long that uh, it's kind of that best of both worlds. And I really feel like if you didn't care about ultimate horsepower, but you wanted something that would be a great daily driver, I think this one really hits the nail on the head. I love what they did with the gauges. I think it was very smart to take the digital gauges and run it across the top here in the middle. Really easy to see the speedometer and the tachometer. I'm still not digging this. I like the design. I wish they would have used a little softer material or something that just didn't look so plasticky because this looks great over here to the right of the infotainment screen, but this is just, I don't like this. I like the silver. I love the steering wheel. The size is great. The way you could position it, obviously it telescopes and it uh, goes up and down, so that's a, a great thing. And I like the digital display. The V6 actually has a pretty decent sound. Is it a V8? No, but it does sound good. And it does have um, that usability that is great in that everyday driving situation. I was gonna change lanes. I think I'll get on it again just to show you. Very nice. Like I said, this has the full safety features that lane keep assist, the emergency braking, um, really, really nice setup here with that. And I do like the heads up display. The heads up display makes it very easy to just keep your eyes forward. You see your speedometer. It also tells you what the actual speed limit is, which is nice as well. Um, I do like the sight lines of the hood. The only thing, like I said, is I think for you, you need to get in this car and see how you feel about the A pillars and about some of the other blind spots uh, in the car. I don't like, I think if I was gonna go Camaro, I wouldn't get a sunroof. I don't like the way the roof is, is really close um, to my head compared to a non-sunroof car, which the non-sunroof, I'm not saying that you have tons of headroom, but it's not as cramped which is kind of nice. But let me go ahead, we're doing 56. I'm gonna step on the loud pedal, drops down. You can hear that sound coming from the V6 and I, it gets up and goes. Brakes are great. You can hear that down shifting. It's really nice um, when it's in that performance shift mode, which is really cool. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the paddles. So you can hear that. A little pop from 
the exhaust. Not bad, not bad at all when it comes to overall performance. I think that it would surprise you. Now, I am looking forward and stay tuned. We will be doing an SS at Moss Family Chevrolet, but um, this V6 is really not too shabby. It definitely, it's one of those things and that's what I love about this channel. I get to experience different cars and because of that, I would have never even thought about going to a dealership and saying, hey, let me go drive a V6 Camaro. But this RS, really nice um, when it comes to power. And that's the one thing. We could sit here and we could talk about styling of this car until we're blue in the face. But when it comes to performance of a Camaro, there's no debate there. These cars are performers. And when it comes compared to the Mustang, it does perform a little bit better. All right, guys, we're going to go down this road over here. I can get on it a little bit for you. Transition is nice. I like the, the front end feel. All right, guys, I decided to move the camera a little bit as we go down this little twisty section of road here. Just to show you how the car transitions from left to right. Brakes are great. Overall, I'm telling you, the, the Camaro is a really nice performer. And to drive this car every day would be an easier task now it would be nice if there weren't so many blind spots but i know everybody's gonna be like all right joe enough with the blind spots uh it is what it is but still the performance is uh is there even with the v6 all right guys one more blast doing 35 on the gas pedal car really shifts very quick to eight speed. Eight speed is really nice. I'm looking forward to driving the new Camaro with the 10 speed. I know the 10 speed in the Mustang, same story. Ultra quick shifts really uh, selects the right gear that you want and that's really wonderful. Um, but you can see that wonderful dash layout that I was telling you about. And I think that's one of the biggest strengths of the interior is that wonderful dash and the infotainment system by far. Um, I think I'm actually liking this setup better than in the Mustang. Um, but performance is there. It comes down to looks. I, I really think that's the, the, the sorest spot. And it'll be interesting to see what Chevrolet is going to do with the design of the Camaro and where they're going to take it. Um, because there's something there that Ford is, is outselling them. But we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. We're going to head back to Moss Family Chevrolet and we'll see you in one second. All right, guys, it's been one amazing day here at Moss Family Chevrolet. Definitely got to give a huge shout out to David Moss. Ricky and everybody else here at Moss Family Chevrolet really allowing Radies Rides full access to their amazing vehicles, all different models uh, from Chevrolet. 2019 Camaro, it's really up to you. I'm glad that I've been able to showcase this RS for you, show you some of the differences, sh show you some of the things that I like and some of the things that I think still need to be updated. But if these are the types of cars that you like to see on Radies Rides, leave a comment in that comment section. If you have not yet subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back each and every day. If you are a subscriber, thank you. Thank you for being on this ride with us. Thank you for your dedication, your care, your commitment, and your trust. It is amazing to share my passion of cars with all of you, and I love it the way you guys share it back with me. If you haven't been to my Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter pages, all Radies Rise original content all the time, so definitely want to check that out. Merch. I know a lot of you are wanting to help promote the channel, support the channel. Go ahead and click that button somewhere above my head. That'll take you to Spreadshirt. There's hats, bags, bandanas, shirts, hoodies, the whole shabam. I'm grateful for anything that you are willing to do and grateful for you wanting to help promote the channel. So thank you for that, and especially a big thank you for Big Guns McGee, Tom Moshner, getting the angles on these Camaros. He was actually pleasantly surprised with this one, and I hope that many of you were also pleasantly surprised, not with his camera skills, because that's no surprise, but with these amazing angles on this new Camaro. So definitely thank you, Tom, for everything. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.